Hello, welcome back to my world of fragrance. Today I'm coming to you with a video about Diptyque. This one was requested as it's one of the favorite niche brands out there. It's available a lot of places and it has a lot of big fans out there. Diptyque was created by three artists in 1961 in Paris and it was a home furnishing store. They then shortly after in 1963 decided to release scented candles and Diptyque therefore became the first scented candle company in the world. The name Diptyque is from ancient Greek and it refers to a sculpture or painting that's composed of two panels. Although Diptyque is still mainly popular for its scented candles, I'm going to talk to you about its fragrances because like I said, they have a place in people's hearts. The first scent from Diptyque was launched in 1968. It was called Lou, and Diptyque has been launching fragrances ever since. So firstly from Diptyque, I'm going to be talking about probably their best seller, their most popular fragrance in the world. I know a few people who wear this and it is one that I also enjoy and love myself. It is Philosikos and this one is, well the name itself Philosikos means friend of the fig. It's an homage to um, Platon and this one is an ode to the fig tree. It's a beautiful, very, very green scent. Despite popular belief, this actually has no fruit in it whatsoever. The notes that are included are fig leaves, coconut, sandalwood. It is a woody fragrance. It was created by Olivia Giacobetti, who also created the famous Costas fragrance for Hotel Costas. Um, she also created another fig fragrance from L'Artisan Parfumeur, which smells a little bit similar to this one. I personally prefer the Eau de Parfum concentration of this over the Eau de Toilettes from Deep Teak. So yeah, I would suggest that you try to opt for the EVPs if you can. I personally find the Eau de Parfum concentration of this has a creamier base. It has a nice sillage and longevity. It is one that I can wear and I'll forget that I'm wearing it after a few hours and somebody's gonna compliment me on it. So yeah, the longevity is good. Next is L'Ombre dans l'eau, and this is one that I have finished several bottles of, so I actually don't have the bottle here in person. This was created by Serge Kalugin, who created five other scents for Deep Teak, and this one reminds me of a trip that I took to Turkey a few years back. Do any of you guys do this where you purchase a fragrance right before a trip so that you have that scent to kind of remind you of that experience later. Well, this one is definitely one that holds a lot of memories for me. This is an earthy rose surrounded by vines and moss with black current deeply running through it. It's sensual, but in the way of a natural beauty, so not necessarily someone who's overly embellished. Sillage for me is outstanding, longevity is moderate. If you smelled the Bay candles from Deep Teak, then this is the same scent. Next in my lineup from Deep Teak is Eau Duel. I have the EDT concentration here and the EDP. So the EDT is from 2010, the EDP is from 2013, um, just to show you the bottle here. So the EDPs are usually the black ones and the EDTs are the white ones. Eau Duel is an oriental fragrance. This is a unique vanilla fragrance that, unlike most vanillas, actually is beautifully worn by a male and a female. For me, this is a very unique vanilla straight from the bean. It's been cut by a sharp knife and it's as if it's just been spread on the skin directly. The name itself, it means jewel water. The duality in the name refers to the two types of vanilla that are included in this scent, the Ferna vanilla and the bourbon vanilla. For me, it's a first date scent when you want to show your personality, but you don't necessarily want to be too bold. If you're interested in trying a different type of vanilla, then definitely give this one a try. Next is Volute. This one was released in 2012 and it is a tobacco and honey combination. This one is a beautiful fall scent. It's unisex, although I think it's leaning more towards masculine. I feel like there was a wave of tobacco and honey scents around this time. This one is unique in the sense that usually tobacco and honey reminds you of maybe an older relative or like the coziness of your grandfather. Well, this one is a stylish young uncle and sillage and longevity is moderate. Next is Eau de Lierre. This one was released in 2006. I smell ivy leaves, geranium, and musk, 
And it's one that isn't mentioned um, too often. There's the back of it again. It is one that I enjoy wearing this time of year. It's a very, very, very green with the toilette. And yeah, I just find it beautiful. So worth a mention. Other favorites from Deep Seek include Tam Dao, which for myself doesn't work with my skin chemistry. It just is a little bit too masculine, a little bit too dry but on the right personality, it also would make a beautiful everyday scent. Thank you so much for watching this video. These were my recommendations from Deep Teak. Let me know what you think about them down below and any other requests that you may have for fragrance reviews, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.